2 Chronicles 32. And we're going to look at this subject tonight, just a one word title, thankful. Thankful. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. You cannot be gracious to a person who thinks they deserve it. You can't. And, and what that means is you can't show grace to a person that thinks they deserve it. The, the only way you were born again is you realized it was a free gift and you didn't deserve it. And, it, and Paul says it causes thanksgiving to God. That be right? So you can't be gracious to a person that thinks they deserve it. Amen. Say this out loud. Expect nothing and be thankful for everything. Every day of your life, you expect nothing and you're thankful for everything. Why? Because uh, it's, it's so important to understand this that every time I get over into this mindset of thinking somebody owes me something or I deserve something, I quit being thankful. And when I quit being thankful, I stop honoring God. Thanksgiving honors God. Thankfulness honors God. And what did he say in 1 Samuel chapter 2 and verse 30? He said, them that honor me, I will honor. But those that lightly esteem me will be lightly esteemed. Well, what, what were, were uh, uh, Eli's boys doing? They weren't being thankful for the position they had they were despising the offerings of God. They were treating them like they were nothing. And God said, look, I was going to do some wonderful things for you, but because of this dishonor, it's not going to happen. There's a lot of things that God wants to do for people. If they just up their level of thanksgiving, they would see it a lot quicker. Yeah. Amen. Amen. When you learn to abound in thanksgiving and it becomes your lifestyle, then you can count on it. God's best will come into your life. But I've got, I've got to learn to abound in thanksgiving. And I'm not doing this because this is Thanksgiving week. Y'all know that I don't, I'm, I'm not one of those kind of preachers. It just happened, this is what the Lord told me to minister on. Look at your neighbor and say, I'm thankful. I'm thankful. Tell them, say, I'm thankful for you. I'm thankful, I'm thankful for what the Lord's done. Say it out loud. What he's done for others, done. He'll, do for he'll do for me. Hallelujah. Amen. You know, I learned that a long time ago. That if I saw God do it for somebody else, God will do it for me. Right? Second Chronicles 32 and verse 25. Notice it says... But Hezekiah rendered not again according to the benefit done to him, for his heart was lifted up. Therefore there was wrath on him and on Jerusalem and on Judah. The Amplified Bible says, But Hezekiah did not make return to the Lord according to the benefit done to him. For his heart became proud at such a spectacular response to his prayer. Therefore there was wrath upon him and on Judah and on Jerusalem. Let me, let's look at a couple other translations. The New English translation says, Hezekiah was ungrateful. Now don't misunderstand this. Hezekiah was a godly king. The Bible says he followed the ways of God. But you'll remember that he was sick. And Isaiah came to him and said, set your house in order, you're going to die. Is that what he said? And it says Hezekiah turned his face to the wall and said, Lord, I've walked before you. I've done what was right. And the Lord said to Isaiah when he was leaving the courtyard, he said, go back and tell him I'm giving him 15 more years. And he went back and Hezekiah said, how am I going to know this? And Isaiah said, well, ask for a sign. And he said, do you want the, the sundial will go 10 degrees forward? And Hezekiah said, 
That's not any big deal for it to go forward. He said, I want the sundial to go 10 degrees backwards. And it did. Which if you know physics, that means the rotation of the earth had to reverse itself. Pretty spectacular response. But notice what it said. Notice what, what it says, the Amplified says of that verse. His heart became proud as such a spectacular response to his prayer. Who answered the prayer? Who healed him? Who should have got the glory? But what was Hezekiah? It says, he did not make return to the Lord according to the benefit done to him. Is that right? It says Hezekiah was ungrateful. How, how, how can that be? My response to something shows my gratitude or my lack of gratitude. Amen. And, and then do you remember the response when the enemy came? The, 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 the enemies came and they wanted to have a tour and Hezekiah showed them everything. Showed them all of his gold, all the things that were in the house of God. And the prophet came and said, what would you show them? He said, I've showed them everything. And God said, because of that, he said, your people are going to go into bondage. And, and your sons will go into bondage. You know why Hezekiah said, oh, that's a good word. He said, because it's not going to happen in my day. It'll happen in their day. Right? So he didn't respond with thanksgiving. The New Living Bible says, Hezekiah did not respond appropriately to the kindness shown him. Appropriately. Now, in the day and age we live in, when you don't have to do anything, and God's okay with whatever you do, people don't like this. Is there an appropriate response for what God does for you? Is there a level of thanksgiving that is considered appropriate? Yes. But what we have in our day and age is we, we have people that like to enter into, uh, all they want is a catharsis. What a catharsis is, is an emotional release. They, they don't want to come to worship service and worship and glorify God and give thanksgiving to God. They want an emotional release. Oh, wrap me in your arms. Wrap me in your arms. Wrap me in your arms. Hold me. Never let me go. Why would, I, why would I say that when he said, I'll never leave you. I'll never forsake you. I'll be with you to the end of the world. I'm a friend that sticks closer than a brother. Worship is not designed to be an emotional release. Where we leave a few tears on the chair and feel better, but nothing changes. What changes your outlook is when you get thankful. They come over here where they believe the word. Amen. Where you get thankful Amen. about what God has done for you. Yes, sir. Amen. Amen. Are you with me? Glory to God. Thanksgiving is not an emotional release. Because there's times you're thankful in the middle of emotionally distraught periods. But you make a choice to be thankful. Thankfulness is a choice you make. I'm going to be thankful. Say it out loud. I'm going to be thankful. Here's Hezekiah who has received a death sentence. God has sent his man to say, Set your house in order because you're not going to get healed. You're going to die. And then God heals him and proves it and says, this is how you know it's going to happen. Sundial goes backwards 
And Hezekiah did not return the appropriate response to God. So there is a level of thanksgiving that's appropriate. Glory to God. Amen. I'll say that again. There is a level of thanksgiving that's appropriate. How long should you thank God for Him saving you? The rest of your life. As a matter of fact, you'll be doing that for eternity. Right? Amen. There are people on the sound of my voice. God healed you. What is the appropriate level of thanksgiving for that? How can I ever stop being thankful for God healing me? What would be the appropriate level? My life, my, my everything. You're my all. You did for me what nobody else could do. I'm, I'm thankful. There are people under the sound of my voice. God delivered you from hopeless drug addiction. You were on your way to death. You were a walking skeleton. And Jesus came walking in your graveyard and set you free and delivered you and brought you out of bondage. What is the appropriate level of thanksgiving? Amen. Every day. Every time I think about it. Amen. Every time I look at my family that I shouldn't have. Every time I look at my wife and kids that I I shouldn't have. I did everything I could do to break it up and destroy it. And God, somehow, you came through and you made a way. And you made me the man that I should be. and, And I'm still with them and we're still in love. And every day, I'm thankful. Hallelujah. And I know I don't deserve it. Yes. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. If, you're, if you're with your spouse tonight, look at them and say, I know I don't deserve you. But I sure am thankful that you're in my life. Amen. What, what's the level that's appropriate? Amen. Do you see that? If somebody blesses you extraordinarily, what level of thanksgiving is appropriate? Amen. Every time you think about it, you write a card, you write a letter, you send a gift. Amen. The people that God's brought into my life, I'm consistently conscious of what they've done and how they've changed my life. And, and when I send a seed to them, I write in the memo portion, this is for honor. This is honor for what you've done in my life. I'm thankful because God didn't have to send you into my life. God did not have to bring you into my life to help me, but He did. And I just want to remind you, I'm thankful. Mm-hmm. Thankfulness is recognition that God was responsible. God was responsible. Say it out loud. God was responsible. God was responsible. Oh, glory. Are, are you following me? I've had people come to me and say, what I was doing in my life before I got saved, I shouldn't be alive. Then you should be thankful. Amen. Amen. There, there are people on the sound of my voice. There were times you died. You died. You, you, you were so involved, you died. You literally quit breathing. You were dead. And God brought you back. Amen. How thankful should we be? Amen. Right? Every time I think about it. Every time it crosses my mind. Thank you. You did that. Hallelujah. When God moves in our lives, the only and proper response is, Father, you did that. That didn't just happen. You did that. That didn't just occur. You did it. 
That's the only proper response. Amen. Amen. Now why? Because thankfulness increases our capacity to receive. Thankfulness increases our capacity to receive from God. The more thankful you are, the more you can take from God. Amen. The more thankful I am. Hallelujah. If, if, you, if you've ever blessed somebody with something, and they, I remember years ago, I remember years ago, we used to do uh, uh, a lot of outreach to um, uh, impoverished children, and, and we still help in those areas, but I mean, this was like a, a focus, a thrust of our ministry. And I'll never forget, we had went and got brand new toys that we were giving out. And, uh, you know, when, when you bring a bunch of kids down, there, there were times we, we gave out <laughs> uh, 10,000, 5,000, 10,000 toys. So, but here's the point. You bring a bunch of kids down, I mean, they can kind of choose, but, you know, you, you, you may not just get everything you want. You got a lot of kids there. And I remember one kid, he, uh, he came, and his gift that he was given was a brand new ball glove, brand new. And I'll never forget his response. What? I don't want this. Now people say, yeah, but you know, he didn't have anything. No, no, no. It's evidence of what's going on in his home. Nobody's thankful in that house. Because you can teach thankfulness. We're thankful for everything. Amen. And not in that old religious way. I have a roof up above me. I have a good place to sleep. Shoes on my table and food on my feet. No, it's the other way around. Shoes on, food on my table and shoes on my feet. Amen. You gave me a love, Lord, and a fine family. Thank you, Lord, for your blessings on me. Yeah, but it's talking about being thankful. It's talking about being thankful for nothing. Thankful that they're poor. Thankful that they don't have anything. You're not thankful for the curse. You're thankful for being redeemed from the curse. Every time you sit down and write out the checks and pay the bills, you ought to be thankful. Why? Because there was a time I didn't have the money to pay my bills. And God, you have blessed me. You have prospered me. And I just want you to know I'm thankful. I'm thankful. Amen. Do you see that? You, you can't be thankful and not increase your capacity to receive. Amen. Whew. Many fail to receive because of unthankfulness. Just not being thankful. Now we're thankful here. But just not being thankful. Amen. It's working. Not being thankful. There are ministers that I know, and, I, and I've known them for years. And I don't know that I've ever seen an attitude of thanksgiving in them. And those same ministers, it's always somebody else's fault. Nobody wants to hear me. Nobody will open their doors. Nobody will, wants the word anymore. Nobody this, nobody that. What about being thankful? Amen. Thankful. Amen. Every time Pastor Michelle and I pull up to this church, I say, we're pulling up to one of the greatest churches in Johnson County. Amen. Oh, I'm thankful. Yes. I'm thankful. I'm standing in a building that has no debt on it. Yes. I, I'm standing in a building that we own every, every part of it. Amen. Oh, glory to God. It's not everything we're going to have, but nobody can take what we do have. Yes. Nobody has a claim on anything we have. Everything's paid for. The equipment's paid for. Yes. There's no debt on Oh, I'm thankful. I'm thankful. I'm thankful. Amen. We got a good warm place. Good cool place. We're not meeting under a brush arbor. Not gathering around a wood stove. Are you grateful? Amen. Had this fine worship team tonight. Yeah. Leading us in. Are you grateful? Yeah. 
Are you really? Amen. 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 So many fail to receive because of unthankfulness. Look at Romans 1. Am I helping you all tonight? Thank you, Jesus. Woo! My goodness, my goodness, my goodness. You know, I was talking about those songs, and uh, I saw my sister and my brother-in-law walk in. They, they pastor, of course, in, in Raytown, uh, House of Mercy over there. Praise God. Amen. They, they, they are in, they're working on their new building. Amen. Getting it all... Uh, they had to go in and, and they're having to refurbish it, but praise God. I'm thankful because, you know, the devil reared his ugly head in that situation and they just kept going and God delivered them and, and, and made a way and now they're in there doing it. Amen. Come on, let's rejoice with them. Let's just be thankful. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Thank you, Lord. But, but I mentioned that because she, she may remember this. If, if she doesn't, she can... Nod like she does. <laughs> but uh, uh, we, we grew up, she and I, we, we grew up in West Texas. And uh, however good that is or bad, but uh, there was a, a singing group that used to come to the church all the time. And they, they were a group of Hispanic singers. And they would come every year. And their number one song, their, their most requested song went like this. My home is not much. My money's near gone. I'm in a deep rut, but it won't be for long. For now I'm so happy because from sin I'm set free. Praise God forever. He's precious to me. Amen. Now that's, that's, you know, he is precious to me. But notice what they said. My home isn't much. My money's almost gone. I'm in a deep rut. And it won't be for long. Isn't I'm coming out of it by faith. It's when I get to heaven. Right? That's not thankful. The highest form of faith is praise and thanksgiving. Did you find Romans 1? Romans 1 and 21. Notice it says about this group of people that because when they knew God, they glorified Him not as God, neither were thankful, but became vain in their imaginations, and their foolish heart was darkened. Notice that they missed out on something because they were unthankful. They didn't know God. They didn't glorify God. They weren't thankful. Well, what weren't they thankful for? Him creating them. Him giving them life. They weren't thankful, but they became vain. They became empty. They became useless in their imaginations. And their heart was darkened. When you fail to offer thanksgiving, what you're saying is, I could have done this without you. I can make it without you. You understand that? And, and that's what diminishes your capacity to receive. Because faith is predicated on you believing God. Right? Amen. They did not give God the glory or the thanks. The glory or the thanks. So they missed out on something. Hallelujah. What did we say earlier? Expect nothing. Be thankful for everything. Amen. Nobody owes me anything. Oh, we ought to try that again. As a matter of fact, you need to say it. When you get quiet, you need to say something. Say it out loud. Nobody owes me anything. Nobody owes me anything. See, nobody, uh, an attitude that I deserve something will stop me from being thankful. If I think I deserve it, I won't thank you. Because after all, I deserve it. Amen. I, I, I told people one time, I said, the only thing you deserved was hell. Because, because that's, 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 that's what we were. We were all sinners going to a devil's hell. And the light of the gospel shined in our life. And yes, we believed the gospel and God saved us. 
I didn't have anything to do with saving myself other than believing God. Right? I didn't deserve to be saved. So I'm thankful I was. Right? Amen. Everything good that comes into our life is because of God. Everything. Everything. Amen. Got to teach your kids, teach your little ones when they get a gift. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Amen. They don't just rip open packages or just run off in the room. No, no, thank you. Somebody bought that for you. They didn't have to. Somebody wanted to do that for you. Do you know the sounds of victory? In this four CD compilation, Pastor Michelle Still teaches us that what comes out of our mouth determines our victory. There is victory in gratitude and there is victory in praise. Thanksgiving and praise are the sounds of victory that put us in a position to increase our capacity to receive from God. This four CD offer is our gift to you. Simply call 1-501-400-8797 or online at buildfaith.net. You can also request your copy by writing us at 10500 West Markham, Suite 110, Little Rock, Arkansas, 72205. Thank you for your partnership. We have many ways that you can connect with us through your generous giving or prayers. Not only will your seed into this ministry help spread the gospel, it will produce a harvest in your own life. You can sow online, by mail, or by phone. Thank you for your faithful partnership. This is Pastor Philip Steele, and I want to invite you out to Little Rock's new Word of Faith Church, Faith Builders Church, right here in Little Rock, Arkansas. Our address is 10500 Markham. We have services Sunday morning at 10 a.m., Sunday nights at 6 p.m., and Wednesday evenings at 7 p.m., our hour of power. If you're hungry for the moving of the gifts of the Spirit, the gifts of healing, the working of miracles, if you're hungry for the moving of the Holy Ghost, then we're the church for you. We value the Word of God and believe that the Word of God is the answer to all of your problems. We have a whole slate of services that are available for your family. We have nursery ministry, children's ministry, and youth ministry, all geared towards building your faith and framing your world by the Word of God. I'd really love to see you. Come and see us. And until then, God bless you.